Hello! Today I want to talk about the worst toxins that I guarantee you have in your home. I have six and for each one of these I'm going to tell you what they are, what they do and where you can find them so that maybe you can avoid them or just get rid of them. It's important to remember as well that 80% of cancers are environmental, so they're caused by your environment. So it's these sorts of chemicals that, that are carcinogenic that you should try and avoid as much as possible. Yeah, th these are the classics, so there are plenty, plenty more that I can't pronounce. Um, but um, let's stick with the, the classics, the evil, evilest of evils toxins that's in your house the most common ones or i guess the ones you should try to avoid let's start with bpa what's bpa what's it stands for it stands for bisphenol a and it's a chemical that hardens plastic so it's found a lot in plastics obviously but you get it also in um, tins and it is also found in most people Actually, there are plenty of studies that show that like this is like 90% of the UK have this uh, chemical in their bloodstream. Like it's crazy. So what it does is over time it breaks down and it starts seeping into whatever it's holding, which most of the time is food. If you heat it, it leaches 55 times faster. So think about that next time you have your plastic bottle and you leave it in your hot car or something like that, or your Tupperwares that you put in the microwave. So BPA is a hormone disruptor, so it imitates estrogen. It has been linked to early puberty and certain cancers. So the best way really to avoid BPA is to have glass. Glass containers, glass jars, everything is better in glass. Because even when you find BPA free tins, for example, there are plenty of studies that show that they use, I don't know what it's called, BPA B, maybe, um, which isn't any better, you know, like they have to replace it somehow. At least glass is a neutral material, it doesn't react with any of the food, so they don't need to add something. Glass is clean, so get glass containers for your microwaves, glass jars, glass water bottles use glass as much as possible. The next one I want to talk about, why do I keep clapping? The next one I want to talk about are VOCs, so volatile organic compounds. VOCs are chemicals that are released off of the materials, they evaporate, it's called off-gassing. VOCs are responsible for the new smell, you know, like when you get a new car or when a room is freshly painted, um, that smell, that new smell, um, it's toxic. It's not good for you. A common uh, VOC that people should worry about is formaldehyde. The, the problem with formaldehyde is that you can't smell it. You'll find formaldehyde in a lot of things that are scented, as well as furniture made with uh, cheap wood, because the wood is mostly just a lot of chipped wood glued together instead of solid hardwood. The nice thing about formaldehyde is that it's a known carcinogen. It is registered as a known carcinogen. It can cause cancer, so avoid it, please. Why am I so dramatic today? So yeah, VOCs are bad for sure. When you buy paint, for example, to paint your walls, um, there are brands, even main brands, like the popular brands who are doing low VOC paints to try to pick those over the other ones. Some, some things like mattresses, pillows, or even some clothes when you buy them, they have this like terrible chemical smell when you first open them. Those are VOCs and the best thing to do is to put them outside in your garden and let them off gas so at least you're not locking it inside your house. Also, uh, an important thing for VOCs is to just open the windows, you know, just let everything fly out. One of the great things that we have in our homes these days is the fact that we're trying to make them as efficient as possible. So they are very airtight so that you don't lose heat and it's a it's a greener approach. But the, the issue with that is that then all these chemicals are just then sitting inside and they can't be released outside. So the newer the house, 
the higher the, the regulation standards and the more likely you are to trap your VOCs inside the house. Open the windows every day, even if it's raining. I think you need about five minutes to recycle the whole bedroom's air. So it doesn't take much, but it's, it's worth doing. The next one are fire retardants. Now these ones are difficult to avoid simply because they are there for some industry standards, right? So that they don't catch fire in five seconds. Like they, they have, they retard the fire. I mean, that's literally what it's called. It slows down the fire if they were to catch fire. So fire retardants are in your mattress. That's the biggest one, I would say. Your sofa, your pillow, your... It's something, it's something they add to fabrics because that is something that is most likely to catch fire, right? The problem is that it's, it's, it's quite toxic and I mean, your mattress is one of those things that you sleep on half of your life, you know? So it shouldn't be covered in all these toxic chemicals, you know? You shouldn't be breathing that in most of your nights. I'll probably make a video at some point going into detail on how to find a good mattress and, and a good healthy bed to sleep in. Many fire retardants are again found in most people in the Western world. We find in the upholstery. Fire retardants are neurotoxins, uh, hormone disruptors, and carcinogenic. So you should really try and avoid it if you can. So there are there are ways to avoid it. Um, some in the UK, for example, we have a few brands that uh, specialize in trying to use more natural alternatives to fire retardants. Things like latex, natural latex, or pillows, for example, there are alternatives to your your typical foam pillow, right? Because foam is, is terrible. Foam don't have a foam pillow. You could have a latex pillow. You could have you could have organic cotton. You could have wool. There there are plenty of alternatives, and you won't find them in your general mattress store. That that that's not where you should go for, look for them. Sadly, it's really not part of the mainstream. So let's make it a part of the mainstream to have an option of a safer sleep. I always think of like newborns and and children who are sleeping for hours and hours of the day on these uh, chemicals and it's, yeah, it's terrible. I don't want that for me. I don't want that for you. Anyway, uh, next ones are phthalates. So as opposed to BPAs, phthalates, they make plastic more flexible. Bad stuff, it's some bad stuff. You find phthalates in cosmetics, you find it a lot in um, nail varnish. That's why I never use nail varnish anymore. It helps it from crackling. So phthalates are neurotoxins and carcinogenics, but mostly they're known to be um, strong hormonal disruptors. They mimic estrogen and they're known to have some terrible effects on the development of uh, children. So let's reduce our plastic use <laughs> for the environment, but also for you and your loved ones. So uh, the, the next one are heavy metals. So heavy metals are neurotoxic and carcinogenic and they are found in your cosmetics sometimes to um, provide a certain pigment. Um, so eyeshadows and lipsticks, but also in your toothpaste and in pesticides. So non-organic fruits and vegetables may be subject to heavy metals. The best way to do it is to eat organic or to check your lipsticks and uh, the brand to make sure it's tested for heavy metals. And the last one I have here are dioxins. So another reason to have organic uh, vegetables uh, rather than the millions of other reasons I have already talked about is that dioxins are used in pesticides and herbicides. Yeah, dioxins are bad as well, you know, they're, they're, they're the classic evil. They're carcinogenic and neurotoxic and, and uh, hormonal disrupting. So to avoid as much as possible. They're also used in certain detergents and anything that's bleached as well. So think about your coffee filters, I buy unbleached and for your detergents, try and find them a natural alternative. So that's all I have. Those are the six evils that I, that I think of every time.
that you should try and avoid as much as possible. So BPAs, VOCs, fire retardants, phthalates, heavy metals and dioxins. All of those you should try and avoid as much as possible. There are many, many more. There are phosphates, there are phenols, there are PFOAs, there are PBDs, there are PFCs, and lots of others that I can't pronounce. But these are the evilest of evil <laughs> that you should try and avoid. I'm so dramatic today. Just try and make safer choices. When I first started um, eliminating all these chemicals from my household, um, I didn't just throw everything out and start again because I didn't have the budget for that, you know. I just, every time I bought a new shampoo or my new pillows, I bought new pillows, I bought ones that I knew were safer and that they didn't have uh, all these chemicals that I just didn't want. Some of these are easier to avoid than others, but I think that the more people actually show their concern or and are interested in finding natural, safer alternatives. The industry will recognize this and more research put into finding safer alternatives. And also the other thing is that it can be overwhelming, you know, to have all these things that you know are not the safest option, but just baby steps, you know, every little helps. Every little thing that you remove it will lower the percentage of chance that, you, that something bad could happen. Every little helps. Don't forget that. Because I don't want to be an experiment and neither should you. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye.